Live from Ann Morrison Park, CBS2 and IdahoNews.com present the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Well, CBS2 is proud to be the exclusive TV home of Spirit of Boise. Our very own Sarah Jacobson leads our coverage from Ann Morrison Park. How's it going, Sarah? Hey, Marcos, good morning. The Spirit of Boise finally here. Now, CBS2 News, Cap Ed Credit Union, and Town Square Media, very proud to be sponsors of the event. We're bringing it to you live all week long here at Ann Morrison Park. Now, Scott and Lori Spencer actually began this about 31 years ago, if you can believe it. And of course, Scott no longer with us, but Lori is keeping this magic alive. Sitting here in a quiet field, it's just amazing to me that it's going to be filled with color and with people and with smiles and with happiness. It all starts Wednesday, August 31st with Cap Ed Kids Day. So it, it all starts with kids because they're our future. Kids get into balloon baskets and go up 20 to 30 feet, still safely tethered to the ground. To share the dream of flight with kids, um, it lets their imaginations go. But we also teach them. They don't know we're teaching them, but we teach them math and science. And those lessons and memories stick with the kids as they grow. I see parents come out with little children who've come up to me to say, I was little when my parents brought me here. Lori knows why they keep coming back firsthand, flying her balloon every day of the event. And when you're in a balloon, it's like the earth is falling away from you. Instead of you going up, the earth is falling down. And it is that wow factor. It's goosebumpy. Another goosebump worthy moment, night glow at dusk Friday. 16 balloons lighting up the night. It's like 100 foot tall Chinese lanterns and that is magical. That's one of the crowd favorites. Then Saturday morning, something new, Dawn Patrol. Four balloons lifting off before the sun when it's still dark. So they're flying through the air and if you're driving your car, if you're walking your dog, all of a sudden these balloons light up in the sky and it, it's absolutely amazing to come and see. Sunday morning is the great launch. All the balloons taking off at once. Balloons are something that are magical and unless you see it in person, um, it, it's hard to visualize the magnificence and the magnitude of them. You can look at pictures and you can go, wow, that, that's pretty awesome. But if you take the time to come down to the park or view the balloons from the bench, it, I promise you it will make a memory and you'll come back year after year. Yeah, once again today, it is all about our kiddos. Now, they're going to be here around 645, of course, here at Ann Morrison Park as we are kicking off the spirit of Boise. Now, Cap Ed Kids Day, that starts around 725 in the morning, and these are free tethered rides we've been talking about for months now. Now, a few reminders, if you are heading out this week, you want to keep these in mind, you'll need to find public parking lots outside the park as there won't be any parking within Ann Morrison Park. Now, very limited ADA parking will be available at the West Royal Boulevard entrance, so keep that in mind. Also, the Crescent Rim around Ann Morrison Park won't have parking available Friday night. Again, that's the night glow spectacular. Another reminder, no drones allowed at the event, of course. Your eyes are going to be on the skies. And finally, organizers, they ask that you please leave your dog at home. Now, we all love our dogs here in Boise, but the burners that power our hot air balloons, they make a sound that's inaudible to humans. So again, it can hurt your dog's sensitive ears. So you want to keep that in mind. And of course, not out here alone this morning, we have our own CBS 2's Michaela Elich joining us bright and early out at Ann Morrison Park. Good morning. Yes, good Michaela. morning. So happy to be here. Yes, no, I was going to say, Michaela will be with us all throughout the morning, showing us kind of the sights really? and sounds of Spirit of Boise as we kick off Cap Ed Kids Day. And you have a little bit more on kind of the magic of this flight happening this week. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I don't know if you can see, but right now it is pretty quiet behind us, but that is likely to change within the next hour or so as balloons will come and fill up this whole entire field and pilots from all over come to this event every year. One of them being Zach Bramble, who has flown since he was a kid. Bramble, a Provo, Utah resident, got his student's pilot license at 14 and he's flown in many different locations, but this will be his first time flying in Boise. For ballooning, that's still metropolitan. You get get to see the Smurf turf from the air, so it's just kind of a fun, fun, unique area. 
Well, Bramble says part of the draw toward the spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is the festival's prestige. The festival has been around longer than Bramble has been alive. It started back in 1991, making this the 31st year. And more than 40 pilots will come to this year's event. And uh, we'll have more on from the pilots here in just a few. Yeah, no, it is going to be very exciting. Of course, still early in the morning, but once people start hitting Ann Morrison, of course, the excitement, we can already feel it in the air. Of oh, yeah, I am. I am <laughs> ready to jump out of my seat. <laughs> no, of course. And of course, CBS2 is your home for coverage of the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We are partnered with CapEd Credit Union and Town Square Media, bringing you all the fun, of course, all week long here at Ann Morrison Park, kicking it off with CapEd Kids Day. But Marcos, a lot of news happening this morning, so we're going to send it back to you in the studio to get ready with that. But we'll be back out here, of course. Again, lots to happen as we kick off the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic live at Ann Morrison Park. Marcos. Thank you, Sarah. Well, unofficial results are still coming in this morning after bond measures in two local school districts were voted on yesterday. With so many people moving to the area, people living within the Valley View and Middleton school districts are voting on bonds to allocate tax money for new buildings. Now, both required a two-thirds majority to pass, but here are the totals for the Valley View School District. 65.71% of voters said yes, falling just short of what the $55 million bond needed to pass. It would have paid for two new elementary schools and land for a future high school. Now, majority of voters also saying yes to the Middleton School District bond, but still not enough to pass it. The district wanted $59 million to build a new elementary school, a new career technical education center, and a renovation of Heights Elementary. Well, Idaho special session uh, will meet to discuss how to spend our state's budget surplus, and that begins tomorrow. CBS 2's Angela Kerndall talks uh, to find out how the $330 million that would go toward K-12 public education will be spent. The inflation bill at the center of Thursday's special session would mean one-time tax rebates for Idahoans, a new flat income tax, and ongoing investment in public K-12 schools and higher education. The plan has 62 co-sponsors, both Democrats and Republicans. Education leaders say they support the investment in public schools, and more than anything, they're ready to see the bill cross the finish line. It's an important step in the right direction toward uh, undoing that chronic unfunding that we've seen um, in Idaho public schools. If all goes according to plan, beginning next July, K-12 through schools would see an additional $330 million from Idaho's sales tax revenue each year. As for what the money should be used for, that will be up to lawmakers to decide in their regular session in January. But here are some ideas from state education leaders. Pay teachers and staff more to stop them from leaving. We've really seen an exodus right of, of educators in recent recent years they say better pay and benefits would go a long way in keeping and attracting educators paraprofessionals and even bus drivers getting them to the point where they feel like like the 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 state of idaho has their back where their districts has their back Quinn Perry with the Idaho School Boards Association says while the needs of every district are different, leaders are aligned on both pay and capital improvements for schools. The state really provides minimal support for school facilities and school districts are really uh, struggling in two ways. One, on just upkeeping outdated infrastructure on school buildings, but also for our communities that are growing, uh, we really need additional support in uh, keeping up with our communities that are growing uh, like so fast. Journey says many of their members are also hoping some funding can go toward more mental health services for students. One more thing, Perry says investments in school safety initiatives is something members and families want to see. Well, parents at Nampa High Schools worry students are not getting enough time for lunch. The school district says they are taking time out of lunch periods to make more time for what they're calling a mentoring block. There's a certain part of the day where um, we have a block that they meet with a teacher and they see them uh, four times a week. It also allows us to get a chance for our students to um, build a closer relationship with an adult. 
Now, students and teachers say the shorter period doesn't give them enough time to get through lunch lines, but officials say the issue isn't because of the number of students eating. It's instead because not every student has their lunch card yet, which speeds up the process of paying. The school dis district does not expect this issue to continue on throughout the year. If a student is struggling to find time to eat, call the school district for more information. Well, turning to developing news, an armed and dangerous man is on the loose. The Boise County Sheriff is looking for him. Danny Thompson is wanted on charges of first degree attempted murder and having a gun as a felon. He was last seen Saturday afternoon uh, around noon in Idaho City, but he does have connections in the Canyon County area, uh, may be driving a white Hyundai. And if you have any idea of where he may be, call 911. Here's a look at that out the door forecast for this afternoon. Warming up, that high pressure is going to be putting us in the triple digits this afternoon. Our high projected at 104 there by 5 p.m. We are going to get into the 90s by 1 p.m. and getting into the 80s there by 11 a.m. Sunny conditions as you start your day. Taking a look at these weather advisor, uh, heat advisories, Eastern Oregon, Lower Treasure Valley, these heat advisories are going to be in place till about Sunday at 12 a.m. So take precaution, make sure you are uh, uh, if you're sensitive to the heat, make sure you're not going outside too much or wearing that sunscreen, but uh, and as well, make sure you're staying hydrated. Here's a look at that off to school forecast 67 and clear this morning. By the time the kids get back this afternoon, 101 and sunny. Here's a look at that temperature trend forecast staying above normal yesterday, uh, above normal with a high of 98, 94 on Monday. And then today, those triple digits are going to put us in the 15 to 20 degree above normal category. Here's a look at those temperatures for today, 105 in Boise, 104 in Nampa. Caldwell there at 105 and 105 down in Mountain Home. So it's going to be a very hot day, folks. Here's a look at that uh, future cast staying dry for right now. We do have a upper trough coming through the area uh, this afternoon into tomorrow, cooling things down for us tomorrow, but no rain. We're going to be staying dry and hot. Well, CBS 2 and News Talk Radio bring you team traffic updates all morning long. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more traffic updates. Well, straight ahead on CBS 2 News, this morning, the spirit of Boise is finally here. What you can expect during this big event. Plus, an Idaho family cherishing the time they have left together. Why they say a life-saving procedure is just out of reach. Now it's time for our question of the day. Let's take a look at yesterday's question. Only 5% of people say they, their junk drawer contains this. Now, what was that? The answer, scissors. Now for today's question, in a new survey, 62% of people claim they know how to do this even though they have never actually done it by themselves. What is it? Head to our Facebook page and social media pages and your answer will be featured live. You're watching CBS 2 live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. It's 5.15 a.m. Welcome to Ann Morrison Park. Of course, we are kicking off a very safe and exciting Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Now, one thing you may not know about the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, it actually takes all year long for these pilots to prep, of course, for their ascent into the skies over this week. Now, Ariana Piper, our very own, sat down with two pilots to talk a little bit about what those preparations look like. The Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is back and the pilots are preparing to fly at Ann Morrison Park. It is a beautiful place to fly. The green grass, the trees, and it kind of sits in this bowl. Greg Lindsay, a commercial hot air balloon pilot in Arizona, has been flying at the Spirit of Boise since 2018. I feel welcomed. My crew feels welcomed. It is an amazing event to be at. Although he flies many balloons, his favorite is Floating Oasis. Floating Oasis is kind of like the most important balloon for us because it tells the story of Susan, my wife, and my life. And she's a commercial pilot as well. Through different images, the balloon illustrates Greg and Susan's travels and even challenges they have faced. And the Saguaro represents like its struggles in the desert to survive on very little water. 
Well, my wife was a breast cancer, ovarian cancer survivor. Her body was struggling. So that represents her journey through cancer. He says the founders, Lori Spencer and her late husband, Scott, are the reason he keeps coming back to Boise each year. We do 20 events a year. If I had to strip down to five events, that would be one that I would always come to. Katie Griggs, a balloon pilot, first went to the Spirit of Boise in 2003. They haven't been back. Uh, until the last four years, and, and then I've been going every year. Her balloon is called Wind Rose. I designed the balloon myself, and it's probably my favorite so far, and I've, I've had quite a few balloons over the years. She says hot air ballooning is a magical experience. I think it's fun for the people to come out and see and actually watch the balloons fly because it's something that they don't get to see every day. This year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is August 31st to September 4th at Ann Morrison Park. Ariana Piper, CBS 2 News. And we are so excited for all of you to come here to Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. A few reminders as you're heading down for today. Here's a look at the plan. Now the balloons, they'll be out on the field at Ann Morrison Park around 6.45 a.m. It's for Cap Ed Kids Day that starts around 7.25 in the morning. Now these are free tethered rides that we've been talking about. And mom and dad, it's only about 20 to 30 feet in the air. It is tethered to the ground, so don't worry. We're taking good care of your kiddos. A once in a lifetime event and we'll have live coverage all morning on CBS 2 News and, of course, on IdahoNews.com. And, of course, keep it here for CBS 2 this morning. We have much more coming live from Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. But, of course, we've got to go to break, so we'll be right back. We'll see you back here in just a few. Here's a look at today's forecast. A high of 104, getting hot, and those triple digits will be sticking around for the next couple of days folks here's a look at those uh, triple digit highs across the valley 105 in Caldwell 104 in Nampa and then there's Boise there at 105 as well a uh, little cooler out in the mountain region 95 in McCall Stanley there at 91 and then Salmon at 95 as well but it's gonna be a scorcher of a week folks staying fairly dry for the time being we do have a trough upper trough system coming through the area by tomorrow cooling things down a couple degrees into the upper 90s, but we are expected to get back into the triple digits by Thursday, folks, or Friday. Uh, so here's a quick look at what to expect. A scorching week, highs up to 104, super dry conditions, and staying hot into the three-day weekend. Here's a look at that extended seven-day forecast, 104 for Wednesday, 98 there on Thursday, sunny conditions, back into those triple digits by Friday, into Saturday and Sunday, staying hot before we get back into the upper 90s by Monday of next week. But notice that sunshine and those dry conditions will be staying around. Look at that, looking at that extended mountain forecast, hazy conditions as those fires continue to burn. 89 on Thursday, sunny, 92 by Friday, and it's going to be staying pretty stable there in the lower 90s and lows in the 50s. Well, CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic updates all morning long. So when you get in the car, turn on KBOI 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an increase in cardiac arrests has some health experts concerned. The research underway to learn why. And later, a water crisis in Mississippi, a look at the damage and the, how they plan to help. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. You're watching CBS2 live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Welcome back. An Idaho man in need of a life-saving transplant is struggling to get the care he needs. Ray Malloy is diagnosed, diagnosed with a rare lung disease called pulmonary fibrosis. Doctors say without a double lung transplant, he only has around two to three years to live. But a procedure like that is far beyond their means and insurance won't cover it. I'm really worried because um, because what happens when your lungs aren't working, your heart takes over. 
Transplant costs anywhere from $500,000 to a million dollars. Ray says to help with the costs, he's still working as a mechanic, a dangerous job considering his poor health. The family will be hosting a benefit coming up on September 11th at Valley View High School and has a GoFundMe to help raise funds for Ray. That information can be found on our website, IdahoNews.com. Well, today's International Overdose Awareness Day, and America has an uphill battle in that fight. According to the CDC, 92,000 people died from drug, over, drug overdoses in 2020. That makes it a leading cause of injury-related death in the country. But overdose deaths are happening more and more. Provisional CDC data from 2021 shows about 100,000 overdoses in the U.S. Symptoms can include vomiting, confusion, and convulsions. Since the start of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare providers have seen an alarming trend, a continuous rise in sudden death from cardiac arrest. That's prompting researchers to find new ways to save lives. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains how. Hey there, hello to you. Researchers have just launched a new clinical trial with first responders looking to understand why people have sudden cardiac arrests. For every one of me that survived 19, don't. Peter Kelly is one of those people. It was a Tuesday morning and it happened around 6.40 a.m. Right after a morning workout seven years ago, Peter's heart suddenly stopped. <coughs> Luckily, early intervention got Peter's heart started again. It's the kind of care Ohio's engine and truck 32 firefighter and paramedics do every day. Once they get into cardiac arrest, sometimes it can be very difficult to, to get them back. So now this team, the first in the nation to assist principal investigator Dr. Justin Benoit of Ohio's University of Cincinnati with the first step in a new clinical trial at every cardiac arrest patient call. So what we're going to be doing is collecting small blood samples, about three tablespoons, so that we can then look at them later and try to figure out what can that tell us about what caused it or how we're going to reverse it. You see the past years in this pandemic time. COVID has caused uh, an increase in cardiac arrest and we don't even fully know why. What they hope is that not only can we have more survival stories, much like Peter's. You know, I, I played in the golf tournament this weekend and and, and won a tournament and I remember looking at the picture with my wife and kids and the first thing I thought it was like God almighty this is you know I almost didn't have this but also that maybe one day in the future when this team shows up on the scene of a cardiac arrest they're going to be able to get a little blood sample run it through a little point of care machine and it's going to tell us hey it's this kind of cardiac arrest you need to treat it in this way and we're going to be a lot more specific about how we treat patients in the future they expect in this trial to start with the first few dozen patients and eventually expand nationwide. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Coming up on CBS 2 News, it's Cap Ed Kids Day at the Spirit of Boise. What time you should take the kiddos for those free flights. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2, Big Brother at 7, the SWAT then joined at 9 o'clock SWAT and then joined Brent Hunsaker and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10. Now don't forget our question of the day. In a new survey, 62% of people claim they know how to do this even though they have never actually done it themselves. What is it? Idaho lawmakers preparing for a special session tomorrow. Why educa educators are hopeful their talks may help with the teacher shortage. Making sure students have enough time to eat. Why parents are worried about lunchtime being cut short. And a special day has arrived. The Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is back. We have live coverage all morning long. Live from Ann Morrison Park, CBS2 and IdahoNews.com present the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Well, CBS2 is proud to be the exclusive TV home of Spirit of Boise. Our very own Sarah Jacobson leads our coverage from Ann Morrison Park. How's it going, Sarah? 
Good morning, Marcos. The spirit of Boise kicking off today. It is finally here. Now, CBS 2 News and CapEd Credit Union, along with Town Square Media, we are the sponsors of this event. We're taking you live here to Ann Morrison Park for CapEd Kids Day. That's how we're kicking it off. And if you can believe it, Lori and Scott Spencer, they created the spirit of Boise Bloom Classic over 31 years ago today. And while Scott, he's no longer with us, his wife Lori is keeping this magic alive. Sitting here in a quiet field is just amazing to me that it's going to be filled with color and with people and with smiles and with happiness. It all starts Wednesday, August 31st with Cap Ed Kids Day. So it, it all starts with kids because they're our future. Kids get into balloon baskets and go up 20 to 30 feet, still safely tethered to the ground. To share the dream of flight with kids. Um, it lets their imaginations go in. But we also teach them. They don't know we're teaching them, but we teach them math and science. And those lessons and memories stick with the kids as they grow. I see parents come out with little children who've come up to me to say, I was little when my parents brought me here. Lori knows why they keep coming back firsthand, flying her balloon every day of the event. And when you're in a balloon, it's like the earth is falling away from you. Instead of you going up, the earth is falling down. And it is that wow factor. It's goosebumpy. Another goosebump worthy moment. Night glow at dusk Friday. 16 balloons lighting up the night. It's like 100 foot tall Chinese lanterns. And that is magical. That's one of the crowd favorites. Then Saturday morning, something new. Dawn Patrol. Four balloons lifting off before the sun when it's still dark. So they're flying through the air and if you're driving your car, if you're walking your dog, all of a sudden these balloons light up in the sky and it, it's absolutely amazing to come and see. Sunday morning is the great launch. All the balloons taking off at once. Balloons are something that are magical and unless you see it in person, um, it, it's hard to visualize the magnificence and the magnitude of them. You can look at pictures and you can go, wow, that, that's pretty awesome. But if you take the time to come down to the park or view the balloons from the bench, it, I promise you it will make a memory and you'll come back year after year. And once again today, it is all about the kiddos for Cap Ed Kids Day. Now, the balloons will be on the field this morning at Ann Morrison Park around 645. So you have over an hour to get on down here. Now, Cap Ed Kids Day kicks off at 725 in the morning officially. And these are the free tethered rides we've been talking so much about. And a few reminders, if you are heading out here this week, you'll need to find public parking lots outside of Ann Morrison Park, as there won't be any parking inside the park. Now, there's very limited ADA parking available at the West Royal Boulevard entrance, so keep that in mind. And Crescent Rim around Ann Morrison Park won't have parking available on Friday night. That is for, of course, the Night Glow Spectacular out here at Ann Morrison Park. But lots of fun happening this morning as we kick off Cap Ed Kids Day. We have our very own CBS 2's Michaela Elich with us this morning live. Good morning, Michaela. Hi, good morning. Well, as we were saying, we hear the music. Things are starting to get ready and excited right now it's still pretty quiet behind us and there's no balloons just as of yet but that is likely to change and this event just brings pilots from all over the place one of them being zach bramble who has been a fly a pilot since he was 14. now he's flown in many different locations but this will be his first time flying in boise for ballooning that's still metropolitan you get get to see the smurf turf from the air so it's just kind of a fun Fun, unique area. Bramble says part of the draw toward the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is the festival's prestige. The festival has been around longer than Bramble has been alive. It started back in 1991, making this the 31st year. And more than 40 pilots will be coming to this year's event. And we'll hear from more of them just in a few, right, Sarah? Oh, Michaela, I'm getting so excited. We can hear kind of the music starting back yep. here. We yep. have just over an hour, of course, until we take flight for Cap Ed Kids Day. And of course, CBS2 is the home sponsor for all Spirit of Boise coverage. And we have lots of information as well as the schedule on IdahoNews.com. So, Marcos. There's a lot of news going on this morning, so of course we're going to send it back over to you. But of course, a lot of fun. We'll be back here quite a bit throughout the morning, so stay tuned. Live from Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Marcos.
Thank you, Sarah. Well, unofficial results are coming in this morning after bond measures in two local school districts were voted on yesterday. With so many people moving to the area, people living within the Valley View and Middleton school districts are voting on bonds to allocate tax money for new buildings. Both required a two-thirds majority to pass. Now, here's a look at those totals for the Valley View school district. 65.71% of voters said yes, falling just short of what the $55 million bond needed to pass. It would have paid for two new elementary schools and land for a future high school. Now, a majority of voters also saying yes to Middleton School District bond, but still not enough to pass it. The district wanted $59 million to build a new elementary school, a new career technical education center, and a renovation of Heights Elementary. Well, Idaho's special session uh, will meet to discuss how to spend our state's budget surplus. That begins tomorrow. Education stakeholders say teacher pay and benefits should be the top of the list. Several local schools begin the school year short of critical staff. It's an important step in the right direction toward uh, undoing that chronic unfunding that we've seen um, in Idaho public schools. The fall goes according to plan. Beginning next July, K-12 schools would see an additional $330 million from Idaho sales tax. The money would likely be used to increase teacher and staff pay, as well as capital improvements for school. Well, parents at Nampa High Schools worry students are not getting enough time for lunch. CBS 2's Vasily Varlamos spoke with the Nampa School District Superintendent about why. The Nampa School District is taking time out of lunch periods to support students. One of the reasons we decided to combine lunches was so that we could have um, more time, what we call um, a mentoring block. That's when secondary students meet with a mentor who checks on assignments, grades, daily attendance, and mental well-being. There's a certain part of the day where um, we have a block that they meet with a teacher and they see them uh, four times a week. It also allows us to get a chance for our students to um, build a closer relationship with an adult. Removing the extra lunch period made lunch lines longer during the first few days of school. Some lines so long, students had to take lunch to class. Russell says the longer lines weren't because of the number of students eating. That had to do with logistically with us uh, making sure that each of our kids had um, our cards ready for the point of sale, um, which is when the student comes up, um, you know, they can scan a card, help them go through the line. Um, and some of our, because of school had just started, we weren't able to get our pictures out for some of those cards, so that was taking some time. Russell says that after the first few days of school, every student has been able to get lunch on time. But if a student ever doesn't, Absolutely, though, we're going to ensure kids get food. So if a student needs to eat in a classroom, then we'll allow that. Um, I don't know if we're to that point right now. And so I, those reports, so what I'd ask is just folks to contact the schools, contact administration so we can kind of work through that. That's still occurring. And the school district does not expect this issue to continue on throughout the year. If a student is struggling to find time to eat, call the school district for more information. Well, President Biden has approved an emergency declaration for Mississippi amid a water crisis in the capital of Jackson. The National Guard has been called in to help get bottled water to those in need after a storm damaged one of the city's water treatment plants. But drinking the water is just one of the issues. For many, there's little running water at, uh, at all, even getting into homes and schools. Right now, we're operating in crisis mode. We don't have air conditioning can't use toilets, uh, we don't have water, um, we don't, therefore we don't have ice. Jackson's mayor says the water system has been in crisis for years now and blames the breakdown on staffing shortages and maintenance that's been put off for way too long. Here's a look at that out the door forecast for this afternoon. Warming up that high pressure is going to be putting us in the triple digits this afternoon. Our high projected at 104 there by 5 p.m. We are going to get into the 90s by 1 p.m. and getting into the 80s there by 11 a.m. Sunny conditions as you start your day. Taking a look at these weather advisor uh, heat advisories, Eastern Oregon, Lower Treasure Valley. These heat advisories are going to be in place till about Sunday at 12 a.m. So take precaution. Make sure you are. Uh, uh, if you're sensitive to the heat, make sure you're not going outside too much or wearing that sunscreen. But uh, and as well, make sure you're staying hydrated. Here's a look at that uh, off to school forecast 67 in clear this morning. 
By the time the kids get back this afternoon, 101 and sunny. Here's a look at that temperature trend forecast. Staying above normal yesterday, uh, above normal with a high of 98, 94 on Monday. And then today, those triple digits are going to put us in the 15 to 20 degree above normal category. Here's a look at those temperatures for today, 105 in Boise, 104 in Nampa. Caldwell there at 105 and 105 down in Mountain Home. So it's going to be a very hot day, folks. Here's a look at that uh, future cast staying dry for right now. We do have a upper trough coming through the area uh, this afternoon into tomorrow, cooling things down for us tomorrow, but no rain. We're going to be staying dry and hot. Well, CBS 2 and News Talk Radio bring you team traffic all morning long. So when you get in your car, turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for those traffic updates. And now time for our question of the day. In a new survey, 62% of people claim they know how to do this even though they have never actually done it by themselves. I'm gonna probably have to say cutting your own hair. I, I, let's take a look what other people had to say. Barry, their taxes, very good. That's a very good guess. Marilyn says a change of oil in the car. Darren says patting their head and rub their stomach at the same time. Good guess, Darren. Well, if you think you know the answer, share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read some of those guesses. You still got about an hour and 20 minutes throughout the morning and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS this morning. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, the Spirit of Boise is finally here, which you can expect during the big event. You're watching CBS 2 Live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Got it. Good morning. Welcome back to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We are live here at Ann Morrison Park, kicking off the events with Cap Ed Kids Day. Now, one thing you may not know about the Spirit of Boise, as all of these balloons are coming out, all of these balloon pilots actually spend about over a year just preparing for this week's events. So our own CBS 2's Ariana Piper, she spoke with a few pilots about what that preparation looks like. The Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is back and the pilots are preparing to fly at Ann Morrison Park. It is a beautiful place to fly. The green grass, the trees, and it kind of sits in this bowl. Greg Lindsay, a commercial hot air balloon pilot in Arizona, has been flying at the Spirit of Boise since 2018. I feel welcomed. My crew feels welcomed. It is an amazing event to be at. Although he flies many balloons, his favorite is Floating Oasis. Floating Oasis is kind of like the most important balloon for us because it tells the story of Susan, my wife, and my life. And she's a commercial pilot as well. Through different images, the balloon illustrates Greg and Susan's travels and even challenges they have faced. And the Saguaro represents like it struggles in the desert to survive on very little water. Well, my wife was a breast cancer, ovarian cancer survivor. Her body was struggling, so that represents her journey through cancer. He says the founders, Lori Spencer and her late husband, Scott, are the reason he keeps coming back to Boise each year. We do 20 events a year. If I had to strip down to five events, that would be one that I would always come to. Katie Griggs, a balloon pilot, first went to the Spirit of Boise in 2003. I haven't been back uh, until the last four years and, and then I've been going every year. Her balloon is called Wind Rose. I designed the balloon myself and it's probably my favorite so far. And I've, I've had quite a few balloons over the years. She says hot air ballooning is a magical experience. I think it's fun for the people to come out and see and actually watch the balloons fly because it's something that they don't get to see every day. This year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is August 31st to September 4th at Ann Morrison Park. Ariana Piper, CBS 2 News. Yeah, we're back out here live at Ann Morrison Park as the excitement is building for Cap Ed Kids Day of Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And the Spirit of Boise would be nothing without our media partners. And CBS 2's Michaela Ellett, she is standing by with one of our friends, our media friends, and she is going to tell us more about why this event is so special. Michaela. 
Nine Light FM. And Michelle, tell me, what's it like being here another year for you guys? I mean, you want to talk about events that are just feel good for the community? This is the one Light FM is all about making people feel good. And when you see all the smiles out here, all the colors of the hot air balloon, that is what the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is all about. So we're so excited to be back again. Absolutely. And this event has been here for 31 years and or so. And so um, what does this mean to the community? Why is this important? Um, it's it's a free event where the whole community can come together and really experience the rich balloon history here in the Treasure Valley because hot air ballooning goes all the way back to the Boise River Festival when they would line them up down on Capitol Boulevard. And, you know, when the River Festival went away, our friends at Town Square Media decided to get together and bring it back here to Ann Morrison Park because it was such a special moment for the community to come together and just see hot air balloons. So it means a lot to the community to be out here. Absolutely. And today is Catbed Kids Day, so kids get to go up in balloons, which is super exciting. So for people who have never been to this event, why should they come today? Okay, so mom and dad, the kids are not leaving the park. Uh, these are tethered balloon rides. So early on in the Balloon Classic, some of the pilots come down a couple days early just to do this for the kids. So when they come out and inflate their balloons, the kids can go pick their favorite hot air balloon, get in line, and the pilots will bring them in the basket, take them up a couple feet in the air on a tether rope and let them see what it's like to float in a hot air balloon. Mom and dad can get a bunch of pictures and they'll stay out on the field until they run out of fuel this morning which is super exciting. We were saying that a lot of the pilots don't have to be here until Friday, right? So they're just kind of doing this for the, the fun of the event, right? Yeah, it's something to introduce kids to ballooning in the Treasure Valley and what makes it so special. And, and to have that hands-on interaction is something so unique to Boise. Absolutely. And what would you say your favorite part of the event is? So it, it, it has to be the shape balloons. Like, I don't know why I never thought about the fact that there were other hot air balloons that weren't just shaped like a dome. You're going to see a sloth out here. There's a rocket coming. There's a tagger coming. To, so to see those massive shapes right in front of you is just incredible and such a good photo op too. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. And as you hear it, you guys should definitely come down to Ann Morrison Park for today's Boise Balloon Classic. Thanks so much. Back to you guys. Here's a look at today's forecast. A high of 104, getting hot, and those triple digits will be sticking around for the next couple of days, folks. Here's a look at those uh, triple digit highs across the valley, 105 in Caldwell, 104 in Nampa, and then there's Boise there at 105 as well. A uh, little cooler out in the mountain region, 95 in McCall, Stanley there at 91, and then Salmon at 95 as well. But it's going to be a scorcher of a week, folks, staying fairly dry for the time being. We do have a trough, upper trough system coming through the area by tomorrow, cooling things down a couple degrees into the upper 90s, but we are expected to get back into the triple digits by Thursday, folks, or Friday. Uh, so here's a quick look at what to expect. A scorching week, highs up to 104, super dry conditions, and staying hot into the three-day weekend. Here's a look at that extended seven-day forecast. 104 for Wednesday, 98 there on Thursday. Sunny conditions back into those triple digits by Friday into Saturday and Sunday, staying hot before we get back into the upper 90s by Monday of next week. But notice that sunshine and those dry conditions will be staying around. Look at that, looking at that extended mountain forecast, hazy conditions as those fires continue to burn. 89 on Thursday, sunny, 92 by Friday, and it's going to be staying pretty stable there in the lower 90s and lows in the 50s. Well, CBS2 and News Talk Radio bring you team traffic all morning long. So as you get in your car this morning, turn on KVOI 670 AM or 93.1 FM for team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News, another heat wave headed for the West. How California is preparing for the more for more triple digit temperatures. This is CBS 2 News this morning. Welcome back. A heat wave in California has emergency rooms and fire departments on high alert. It's expected to be the longest and hottest heat waves of the year. Multiple consecutive days of 100 plus degree temperatures across much of the state. It 
can happen so fast. Uh, we have people who go out for a hike, they don't come uh, with any water or nourishment, and then the hike takes them much longer than they predicted. Officials are reminding everyone to stay hydrated and stay cool. The city of Oakland is preparing to skim thousands of dead fish from Lake Merritt ahead of the holiday weekend. A uh, heat wave because of the weather conditions right now. The algae is growing at a rate that uses up all the oxygen in the water, causing those fish to suffocate. This algae exists in the water naturally, and it's at pretty low levels. But because of these weird conditions that we have right now, we've got a situation where the algae is thriving. The City of Oakland's Public Works Department is set to start cleaning things up today. They say while the dead fish aren't really an environmental or health concern, but more of an odor concern. Now, the Department of Defense has listed climate change as a national security threat and is now taking steps to reduce its carbon footprint. At Fort Meade in Maryland, solar panels are now topping nearly 60 percent of housing there. The base also has plans to transform a landfill into a 60 acre solar farm. We can't afford to lose power. Losing power means we lose training and we lose operations. Army's climate strategy also includes a goal of an all-electric, non-tactical vehicle fleet by 2035 and fully electrical tactical vehicles by 2050. NASA will try to launch its new uh, moon rocket this Saturday. The agency scrubbed the Artemis 1 launch on Monday after engine trouble and of course, those weather issues impacted the countdown, but they're going to change fueling procedures. The $4 billion test flight is the first step toward putting astronauts back on the moon by 2025. Idaho lawmakers are preparing for a special session. They're hope hoping that talks will lead to a help teacher shortage. Plus, making sure students have enough time to eat. Why parents are worried about lunchtime being cut short. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Stay with us as we're live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. The local weather and news continues on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Live from Ann Morrison Park, CBS2 and IdahoNews.com present the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Well, CBS2 is proud to be the exclusive TV home of Spirit of Boise. Our, Sarah, our very own Sarah Jacobson leads our coverage from Ann Morrison Park. Yeah, Marcos, we are having so much fun out here this morning. Of course, the excitement building, you might not be able to see much behind me, but we are kicking off the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic with Cap Ed Kids Day. Now, of course, it would be nothing without our media sponsors. Now, CBS2, Cap Ed Credit Union, and Town Square Media are your sponsors for this event throughout the entire week. And of course, the Spirit of Boise would be nothing without Lori and Scott Spencer. They began the Spirit of Boise just 31 years ago. And of course, Scott no longer with us, but his wife Lori is keeping the magic of the spirit of Boise alive. Sitting here in a quiet field, it's just amazing to me that it's going to be filled with color and with people and with smiles and with happiness. It all starts Wednesday, August 31st with Cap Ed Kids Day. So it, it all starts with kids because they're our future. Kids get into balloon baskets and go up 20 to 30 feet, still safely tethered to the ground. To share the dream of flight with kids, um, it lets their imaginations go. In. But we also teach them. They don't know we're teaching them, but we teach them math and science. And those lessons and memories stick with the kids as they grow. I see parents come out with little children who've come up to me to say, I was little when my parents brought me here. Lori knows why they keep coming back firsthand, flying her balloon every day of the event. And when you're in a balloon, it's like the earth is falling away from you. Instead of you going up, the earth is falling down. And it is that wow factor, it's goosebumpy. 
Another goosebump worthy moment. Night glow at dusk Friday. 16 balloons lighting up the night. It's like 100 foot tall Chinese lanterns and that is magical. That's one of the crowd favorites. Then Saturday morning, something new. Dawn Patrol. Four balloons lifting off before the sun when it's still dark. So they're flying through the air and if you're driving your car, if you're walking your dog, all of a sudden these balloons light up in the sky and it, it's absolutely amazing to come and see. Sunday morning is the great launch. All the balloons taking off at once. Balloons are something that are magical and unless you see it in person, um, it, it's hard to visualize the magnificence and the magnitude of them. You can look at pictures and you can go, wow, that, that's pretty awesome. But if you take the time to come down to the park or view the balloons from the bench, it, I promise you it will make a memory and you'll come back year after year. Yes, you can. And once again, today, all about the kids. Now, the balloons will be on the field of Ann Morrison Park around 645. So again, you have about 45 minutes. Cap at Kids Day kicks off around 725 in the morning. Now, these are the free tethered rides we've been talking about. It's going to be a great time. And a few reminders, if you are headed out there anytime this week, you will need to find public parking lots outside of Ann Morrison, as there won't be any parking inside the park. Now, also keep in mind that uh, ADA parking will be limited, but it is available at West Royal Boulevard entrance. Also, keep in mind that Crescent Rim around Ann Morrison Park won't have parking available for Friday night. That is the night glow spectacular. Going to be a lot of fun, though, down here live at Ann Morrison Park. And CBS 2's, uh, but we also want to mention, too, another note. Want to make sure everyone's safe as they're heading out. We don't want any drones out here this morning as well. We want all of that fun to be right through your eyes. So. Let's send it over to CBS 2's Michaela Elich because she's live somewhere around here in Ann Morrison Park with a very special guest to introduce you to. Michaela. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm here with Michelle Hart from 107.9 Light FM. And we were just talking. We see some people starting to set up. They have their trailers and hopefully the balloons start to get on the field and start to blow up. But you guys have been here for quite some time for a couple of years. So why are you guys here this year and why is it important? Well, all the radio stations at Town Square Media and our staff actually help put this together, you know, under Lori Spencer's guidance. And we just like bringing a feel good family event to the Treasure Valley that's free for everyone. And, you know, there are balloon festivals all over the country. Not a lot of them you can get this up close and personal with the balloons. So it's really something unique here in Boise. Absolutely. And you were saying there are tons of balloons and you were saying there's going to be probably about 20 here today, right? Yeah. So on Cap 8 Kids Day, some of the pilots, because they don't have mandatory flights until later in the week, come down early to let the kids jump in the baskets of their balloon and go up on the tether ropes to see what it's like to be in a hot air balloon. So there's about 20 of them going to do that this morning. And then tomorrow when they go up, weather permitting for media day, there's going to be 40 balloons tomorrow. Which is awesome. And there is a a few days of worth of fun, right? So we have Cap Ed's Kids Day today. And what are a few of the other events coming this week? So weather permitting, there'll be morning launches Thursday through Sunday. Um, the night glow spectacular is on Friday night. So that's here at Ann Morrison Park. Uh, festivities start about 5.30 and then 8.05. They'll bring the balloons out and line the field. They don't fly at night, but they'll light up like giant Chinese lanterns and do a music routine, which is really, really cool. One of my favorite events, though, is on Sunday. If the weather permits, they do something called the Great Launch, where all the balloons try to clear the field at the same time. So you see them all go up at once instead of them kind of popcorning up one by one like you see during the other morning launches. It's really cool. So you want to bring your cameras for that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I was here last year and it is honestly just spectacular just seeing the balloons go up right in the morning. And what would you say your favorite part of this event is? I mean, there are so many cool things to see, but what would you say your favorite part is? You know, it's hard to choose. Like the great launch is definitely one of my favorites when it comes to photography. Um, kids day is just so great because the kids are so excited to get in these balloons and really get to see what they look like close up. So that's really special. Absolutely. And for people who are new to the Treasure Valley, may have never been to an event like this, um, what would you say to them? What would you, why, why is it worth it to come to an event like this? Uh, Cause like I say, it's unique to Boise where you get this up close and personal balloons. I will give you one tip. The grass in the morning is wet. Yes. <laughs> Don't wear flip flops out here. If you have rain boots or waterproof shoes. Yeah, look at, look at her boots. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my pro tip for any newbies that haven't been before. Yes, the grass is wet. Fortunately, it's a little bit warmer this year, so it won't be as cold on the field, which is nice, right. but definitely bring your boots. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate it. And as you heard it first, make sure you come to Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Back to you guys.
No, thank you, Michaela. That is, of course, a great tip. Now, of course, CBS2 is the TV home for well, the unofficial Spirit results of Boise this morning after bond measures in two local school districts were voted on yesterday. With so many people moving to the area, people living within the Valley View and Middleton school districts are voting on bonds to allocate tax money for new buildings. Both require a two thirds majority to pass. Now, here's a look at the totals for the Valley View School District. 65.71% of voters said yes, falling just short of what the $55 million bond needed to pass. It would have paid for two new elementary schools and land for a future high school. A majority of voters also saying yes to Middleton School District, but still not enough to pass it. The district wanted $59 million to build a new elementary school, a new career technical education center, and a renovation of Heights Elementary. Well, Idaho Special Session will meet this week to discuss how to spend our state budget surplus. That begins tomorrow. Education stakeholders say teacher pay and benefits should be the top priority. Several local schools begin the school year short of critical staff. It's an important step in the right direction toward uh, undoing that chronic unfunding that we've seen um, in Idaho public schools. Now, fall goes according to plan. Beginning next July, K through 12 schools would see an additional $330 million from Idaho State sales tax. Tax. The money would likely be used to increase teacher and staff pay, as well as capital improvements for schools. Well, parents at Nampa High School worry students are not getting enough time for school. The school district says they are taking time out of their lunch periods to make more time for what they call a mentoring block. There's a certain part of the day where um, we have a block that they meet with a teacher and they see them uh, four times a week. It also allows us to get a chance for our students to um, build a closer relationship with an adult. Now, students and teachers say the shorter period doesn't give them enough time to get through lunch lines. Officials say the issue isn't because of the number of students eating, but instead because not every student has their lunch card yet, which speeds up the process of paying the school district of paying. The school district does not expect this issue to continue on throughout this year. If a student is struggling to find time to eat, call the school district for more information. Well, turning to developing news, an armed and dangerous man is on the loose. The Boise County Sheriff is looking for him. Danny Thompson is wanted on charges of first degree attempted murder and having a gun as a felon. He was last seen Saturday at around noon in Idaho City, but has known connections in Canyon County. He may be driving a white Hyundai. So if you have seen him, make sure to call uh, 911. Here's a look at that out the door forecast for this afternoon. Warming up, that high pressure is going to be putting us in the triple digits this afternoon. Our high projected at 104 there by 5 p.m. We are going to get into the 90s by 1 p.m. and getting into the 80s there by 11 a.m. Sunny conditions as you start your day. Taking a look at these weather advisor, uh, heat advisories, Eastern Oregon, Lower Treasure Valley, these heat advisories are going to be in place till about Sunday at 12 a.m. So take precaution, make sure you are uh, uh, if you're sensitive to the heat, make sure you're not going outside too much or wearing that sunscreen, but uh, and as well, make sure you're staying hydrated. Here's a look at that uh, off to school forecast 67 and clear this morning. By the time the kids get back this afternoon, 101 and sunny. Here's a look at that uh, temperature trend forecast staying above normal yesterday, uh, above normal with a high of 98, 94 on Monday. And then today, those triple digits are going to put us in the 15 to 20 degree above normal category. Here's a look at those temperatures for today. 105 in Boise, 104 in Nampa, Caldwell there at 105 and 105 down in Mountain Home. So it's going to be a very hot day, folks. Here's a look at that uh, future cast staying dry for right now. We do have a upper trough coming through the area uh, this afternoon into tomorrow, cooling things down for us tomorrow, but no rain. We're going to be staying dry and hot. Of course, we're keeping you updated on all things traffic. How are things looking out there, Ron? Good start. Uh, very quiet. Thank you. And uh, as you get ready to get out the door, folks, if you do the early part of the drive, you know it's fairly light this time of the morning. And, uh, well, even between now and 7, usually not too much kicking in. But they uh, don't have any early accidents or anything. Keep in mind the uh, closure continues west part of Meridian 
It's uh, Cherry Lane. Still a few more days. That area barricades up between Black Cat and McDermott on Cherry Lane. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Wyan. Well, CBS2 and uh, KBOI Talk Radio keeping you updated on all things traffic. So turn on KBOI on 670 AM, 93.1 FM for those team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS2 News this morning, the spirit of Boise is finally here. What you can expect during the big event. Plus, an Idaho family cherishing the time they have left together. Why they say a life-saving procedure is just out of reach. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Only 5% of people say their junk drawer contains this. What was it? Scissors. All right. Now time for today's question. In a new survey, 62% of people claim they know how to do this, even though they've never actually done it by themselves. What is it? Watching CBS 2 live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Welcome to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We are live here at Ann Morrison Park, kicking off the event with Cap Ed Kids Day. And one thing you may not know about the Spirit of Boise is that all of these pilots behind me, you may not be able to see them just yet, but it takes almost a year to be able to prepare for the week long events. Oh, perfect. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're going to go right to, of course, talking to the woman of the hour. Now, 31 years ago, the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic began, and it is all because of this woman right here, Lori Spencer. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for Good having morning. me. Yeah, I was going to say it's so early this morning, but we're excited to get it kicked off with Cap Ed Kids yes. Day. Lots of people excited to be coming down to Ann Morrison Park. So can you tell us a little bit, I mean, it's been 31 years of the Spirit of Boise. Mm -hmm. What's changed over the years? Oh, so much has changed. I, I think the biggest change, of course, is um, my husband's not here to help guide this along, but he's here in spirit. And uh, that's that's how we do it. We just, we work and we work through him, but we're also making little changes. And as the years go by, um, we welcome people in here. We have pilots from Australia coming this year, all over the United States. Kids Day is a perfect way to kick off the event. Every kid that comes down to the field gets a free tether right. It's our give back to the community. Yep. And it's, it's an amazing thing to experience. If folks at home, if, you, if you're watching this now, kind of wondering what the sights and the feel is, I mean, it, the excitement is already in the air. These kids yes. being able to go up in these tethered balloon rides. Yes. And can you speak a little bit to what these tethered balloon rides are? Because, I mean, it's a once in a lifetime experience for these kids. Yes, we already have kids on the field anxious to go up. We give them the dream of flight. Just think about it, 500 feet in the air to you when it's like 30 feet in the air to them. And mom and dad get smaller and they wave at them. If we can spark the imagination of one kid, that's what we do. We love it. Oh, it's so cool. And also kind of an ode to STEM in a lot of ways too, that learning of the physics it of is. flight. <laughs> it is. Kids don't know that they're learning. They're, they're learning science. They're learning math. They're learning physics. Because as they go up, the pilots talk to them about how balloons fly, how big the balloons are. And so, yeah, we're giving them an education, too. They just don't know it. Yeah, no, it is definitely worth your time. I mean, I know you hear this, but I want to I want to take you by, you know, the shoulders and say it is worth it to get your kids out here and Absolutely. come out for Cap Ed Kids Day. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's a lot of different events happening this year. I know Nightglow Spectacular, another one that we are so excited for. That is, I think that's a, a crowd favorite, a community favorite. On Friday night, you have to get here early because it's very, very, very busy. It's going to be warm this year. Bring lots of water hydrate yourself. We're having Dawn Patrol yes. again. We're adding a balloon this year. Um, for those of you who don't know it, Dawn Patrol launches while it's still dark. So if you're driving down the road, all of a sudden you see um, a hundred foot Chinese lantern flying through the sky. That's what Dawn Patrol is. It just, it's goosebumpy. It gives you goosebumps. Oh, I'm so excited. It's a spectacular sight, guys. You want to come down to Ann Morrison Park. Thank you so much, Lori. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Please come down and see us. Yes, no, it's going to be a great time. You'll hear obviously more from Lori throughout the newscast this morning. Thank you so much for being with You're us. Welcome. And Marcos, we know there's a lot of news happening today as well as the weather. So we're going to send it back to you in the studio. Here's a look at today's forecast. A high of 104 getting hot and those triple digits will be sticking around for the 
next couple of days, folks. Here's a look at those uh, triple digit highs across the valley, 105 in Caldwell, 104 in Nampa, and then there's Boise there at 105 as well. A uh, little cooler out in the mountain region, 95 in McCall, Stanley there at 91, and then Salmon at 95 as well. But it's going to be a scorcher of a week, folks. Staying fairly dry for the time being. We do have a trough, upper trough system coming through the area by tomorrow, cooling things down a couple degrees into the upper 90s, but we are expected to get back into the triple digits by Thursday, folks, or Friday. Uh, so here's a quick look at what to expect. A scorching week, highs up to 104, super dry conditions, and staying hot into the three-day weekend. Here's a look at that extended seven-day forecast. 104 for Wednesday, 98 there on Thursday. Sunny conditions back into those triple digits by Friday into Saturday and Sunday, staying hot before we get back into the upper 90s by Monday of next week. But notice that sunshine and those dry conditions will be staying around. Look at that, looking at that extended mountain forecast, hazy conditions as those fires continue to burn. 89 on Thursday, sunny, 92 by Friday, and it's going to be staying pretty stable there in the lower 90s and lows in the 50s. Of course, we're keeping you updated on all things traffic. Ron, how are things looking out there? Oh, well, we have one little uh, glitch going with the drive out near the Boise Airport. We've got a grass fire. Fire burning pretty good, and fire crews at last check uh, on the way should be getting there soon. Uh, police blocking the on-ramp from Vista to ID4 westbound. The fire is right in the gore point, that uh, grassy area where the on-ramp would come on to ID4 westbound. Uh, no lanes blocked on the freeway, but that ramp from Vista to ID4 westbound shutting down and uh, fire burning there. Fire crews be on the scene and uh, shouldn't uh, be anything gets out of control, really, because it's in that uh, gore area of uh, the on-ramp or the interchange there at Vista. Other than that, things quiet, moving fine, ID4 eastbound out of Nampa. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thanks, Ron. Well, CBS 2 News and News Talk Radio bring you team traffic all morning long. Turn on KBOI on 670 AM and 93.1 FM for team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, an increase in cardiac arrests has some health experts concerned. The research underway to learn why. And later, a water crisis in Mississippi, a look at the damage and the help now on the way. You're watching CBS 2 Live from the You know, it's like one of those things after all those skydives, it's like getting on a bike. Welcome back to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We are here live at Ann Morrison Park, kicking off the event today with Cap Ed Kids Day. It's Wednesday, of course, and all these kiddos are going to come down to, to Ann Morrison Park and get a free tethered balloon ride. And of course, it wouldn't be the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, of course, without our chief forecaster, Roland <laughs> Stedham. Good morning, Roland. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, it's an exciting morning because conditions are just right. Yeah. You know, balloonists, we're out here, we're wearing light jackets, I'm wearing a light jacket, and it feels really appropriate. Temperature readings are like upper 60s, near 70 degrees. And what balloonists want is that they want that differential between the air that they blast into their balloon, which is heated by the burners, right, that they ignite, and the surrounding air. If you had the temperature on the surrounding side be the same as the temperature that was inside the balloon, the balloon would never get off the ground. So you, that's why they're always launching bright and early in the morning when the temperatures are coolest in fall. And winter is actually a great time to launch a balloon because of the differential that you get between the inside and the outside. Yeah, I know a little bit of di diabetic heating for all of our weather yeah, nerds out there, there watching today. <laughs> now you're talking my language. <laughs> well, it is going to be a beautiful day in Roland. As you said, temperatures are picture perfect out here at Ann Morrison this morning. Yeah, yeah almost 60 degrees. I don't know about you, but yeah, um, not quite the bundle up situation we're normally used to really, but no. you definitely want to bring some um, waterproof boots if you are heading out. The ground is wet, but what we're focusing on, of course, is the sky. So Roland, speak a little bit to the, the physics of the balloons taking off. Today we're doing tethered balloon rides, of course. So can you talk a little bit about what these pilots are, you know, are doing out here today? Well, they're subject to what the wind and what the weather is doing. You can't take a balloon and say, well, I want to go that away, yep. or I want to go <laughs> that away. I don't like the direction we're going in, so we're going to turn around. They can't do that. So once they launch, they need to know what conditions are like on the ground. And the first few thousand feet in the air, that's essential because that wind, whatever is happening, and sometimes in the valley, 
the wind can actually swirl around like an eddy with the inside of a river. So the air behaves exactly like water. And so they are subject to all these little swirls and twists and direction of movement, uh, just like you were on a river. So they want to make sure that the <laughs> winds are generally light, uh, generally uh, you know, steady in the direction in which they're blowing in. So they want to be able to take off, get caught up in those winds, and they may say, the wind down here isn't in my favor, but I see those guys up there 300 feet are going in that direction, yeah. so I'm going to go up <laughs> 300 feet so I can follow them and go in that direction. So they read each other, and they read what the surface winds are doing, and then they also launch a drone just before they go up when they're actually not tethered. Today's not that big a deal because it's, it's a tethered ride. Oh. But in the morning, they'll have a drone that they'll actually launch. No, that is amazing, of course, why Roland is here, and we're going to see you back here coming up. Coming up, a special session taking place at the Idaho Legislature. Legislature. Plus, why your students in Nampa may need more lunchtime. And the spirit of Boise continues this morning. Live from Ann Morrison Park, CBS2 and IdahoNews.com present the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Well, CBS2 is proud to be the exclusive TV home of Spirit of Boise. Our very own Sarah Jacobson leads our coverage from Ann Morrison Park. Sarah, how are things looking out there? Oh, good morning, Marcos. Of course, we are kicking off the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And of course, flight, or at least our tethered balloons, take flight today for Cap Ed Kids Day. It's one of our favorite days of the year where kids get to go up in tethered balloons. Now, the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic began over 31 years ago because of Scott and Lori Spencer. Now, Scott sadly is no longer with us, but his wife, Lori, she's keeping the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic alive. Sitting here in a quiet field, it's just amazing to me that it's going to be filled with color and with people and with smiles and with happiness. It all starts Wednesday, August 31st with Cap Ed Kids Day. So it, it all starts with kids because they're our future. Kids get into balloon baskets and go up 20 to 30 feet, still safely tethered to the ground. To share the dream of flight with kids. Um, it lets their imaginations go, but we also teach them. They don't know we're teaching them, but we teach them math and science. And those lessons and memories stick with the kids as they grow. I see parents come out with little children who've come up to me to say, I was little when my parents brought me here. Lori knows why they keep coming back firsthand, flying her balloon every day of the event. And when you're in a balloon, it's like the earth is falling away from you. Instead of you going up, the earth is falling down. And it is that wow factor, it's goosebumpy. Another goosebump worthy moment, night glow at dusk Friday, 16 balloons lighting up the night. It's like 100 foot tall Chinese lanterns and that is magical. That's one of the crowd favorites. Then Saturday morning, something new, dawn patrol four balloons lifting off before the sun when it's still dark. So they're flying through the air and if you're driving your car, if you're walking your dog, all of a sudden these balloons light up in the sky and it, it's absolutely amazing to come and see. Sunday morning is the great launch. All the balloons taking off at once. Balloons are something that are magical and unless you see it in person, um, it, it's hard to visualize the magnificence and the magnitude of them. You can look at pictures and you can go, wow, that, that's pretty awesome. But if you take the time to come down to the park or view the balloons from the bench, it, I promise you it will make a memory and you'll come back year after year. Yeah, and a few reminders, if you are heading out here this week, you'll need to find public parking lots outside of the park as there won't be any parking in Ann Morrison. We also have very limited ADA parking that'll be available at the West Royal Boulevard entrance, so keep that in mind. Also, Crescent Rim around Ann Morrison Park, the bench won't have parking available Friday night. That's for the night glow spectacular, so plan ahead. Also, no drones are allowed at the event. And finally, organizers, they ask you to leave your dog at home. Now, the burners from the power of those hot air balloons that behind us 
They make a sound that's inaudible to humans, but they can hurt your dog's sensitive ears. So just keep that in mind. But we are very excited to see you out here at Ann Morrison Park to kick off the spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And our very own CBS 2's Michaela Elich is standing by with a very special guest. Let's send it on over to her. Michaela. Well, good morning, everyone. And the event looks like it's just about to begin. We have some some people coming, the balloon setting up, and this is a big day for Cap Ed. And I'm joined by Todd Christensen. And tell me a little bit about this big day and why it's so important for you guys. Well, for us, it's Cap Ed Kids Day, so we're inviting families with elementary age children and younger to come out and receive a free tethered hot air balloon ride to experience the wonder of flight. Absolutely, and. Uh, how long do they have today for parents to come out with their kiddos and come up in these balloons? Uh, typically they're going to be able to start having rides around 7.30. I think everything today is with some ish added to that and probably for about an hour, maybe a little over an hour, so an opportunity to bring them down, receive a ride and still get them off to school this morning. Okay, perfect. And I heard you guys have a big balloon this year. Kind of tell me about that and the importance of it. Well, you can see our balloon here in the backdrop and then yeah. you'll be able to see it out on the field. We've had the balloon for about seven years now and its name registered with the FAA is Read to Rise and it's our continued commitment to the education community as a credit union founded by teachers but we're open to all who want to join us in supporting education and Read to Rise, why? is we want to encourage families to read to their children and develop that literacy capacity so they can read to rise throughout their life. Absolutely, and there's going to be a few days worth of fun this week, and so what would you say you're looking forward to most? Um, wow. You know, there's a lot of great things, you know, Kids Day today, then we have the launches on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning, a night glow is Friday night. That's here in the park. That's a great opportunity to come out and see hot air balloons, but glowing at night. Absolutely. And so um, for those of people maybe considering coming, um, what would you say to people new to the Treasure Valley? for coming to this year's event. First of all, welcome to the Treasure Valley. Welcome to the great state of Idaho. We're glad that you're here, part of our community. Come out and celebrate the end of summer with us. A couple of suggestions is make sure that you plan ahead for parking because it is a large event. And another item is to encourage you to leave your furry friends at home. Uh, the sounds of the hot air balloons and all that's happening here, just not necessarily the most friendly thing for furry friends. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Todd, for joining us today. And as you heard it, make sure you guys come down to Ann Morrison Park for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Back to you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Michaela. And of course, much more to fun to come from Ann Morrison Park. Of course, CBS2 is your exclusive TV sponsor for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. You can see everything on our CBS2 Facebook page on Channel 2 and of course, Idaho News. Com. Now, Marcos, I know lots of news happening as well as we need a little update on the weather. So we're going to send it back to you now. But of course, we'll be back in the next segment with much more from Ann Morrison Park and the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Marcos. Thank you, Sarah. After bond measures in two local school districts were voted on yesterday with so many people moving to the area, people living within the Valley View and Middleton school districts are voting on bonds to allocate tax money for new buildings. Both require a two thirds majority to pass. Now, here are the totals for the Valley View school district. 65.71% of voters said yes, falling just short of what the $55 million bond needed to pass. It would have paid for two new elementary schools and land for a future high school. A majority of voters also saying yes to Middleton School District bond, but still not enough to pass it. The district wanted $59 million to build a new elementary school, a new career technical education center, and a renovation of Heights Elementary. Well, Idaho Special Session will meet this week to discuss how to spend our state's budget surplus. That begins tomorrow. Education stakeholders say teachers' pay and benefits should be top of the list. Several local schools begin the school year short of critical staff. It's an important step in the right direction toward uh, undoing that chronic unfunding that we've seen um, in Idaho public schools. 
Fall goes according to plan. Beginning next July, K-12 schools would see an additional $330 million from Idaho sales tax re revenue. The money would likely be used to increase teacher, uh, teacher pay and staff pay, as well as capital improvements for schools. Parents at Nampa High schools worry students are not getting enough time for lunch. The school district says they are taking time out of their lunch periods to make more time for what they call a mentoring block. There's a certain part of the day where um, we have a block that they meet with a teacher and they see them uh, four times a week. It also allows us to get a chance for our students to um, build a closer relationship with an adult. Students and teachers, however, say the shorter period doesn't give them enough time to get through lunch lines. Officials say the issue isn't because of the number of students eating, but instead because not every student has their lunch card yet, which speeds up the process of paying the school uh, district. The school district does not expect this issue to continue throughout the year. If a student is struggling to find time to eat, call the school district for more information. Here's a look at that out the door forecast for this afternoon. Warming up that high pressure is going to be putting us in the triple digits this afternoon. Our high projected at 104 there by 5 p.m. We are going to get into the 90s by 1 p.m. and getting into the 80s there by 11 a.m. Sunny conditions as you start your day. Taking a look at these weather advisor uh, heat advisories, Eastern Oregon, Lower Treasure Valley. These heat advisories are going to be in place till about Sunday at 12 a.m. So take precaution. Make sure you are. Uh, uh, if you're sensitive to the heat, make sure you're not going outside too much or wearing that sunscreen, but uh, and as well, make sure you're staying hydrated. Here's a look at that uh, off to school forecast 67 and clear this morning. By the time the kids get back this afternoon, 101 and sunny. Here's a look at that temperature trend forecast. Staying above normal yesterday, uh, above normal with a high of 98, 94 on Monday. And then today, those triple digits are going to put us in the 15 to 20 degree above normal category. Here's a look at those temperatures for today, 105 in Boise, 104 in Nampa. Caldwell there at 105 and 105 down in Mountain Home. So it's going to be a very hot day, folks. Here's a look at that uh, future cast staying dry for right now. We do have a upper trough coming through the area uh, this afternoon into tomorrow, cooling things down for us tomorrow, but no rain. We're going to be staying dry and hot. Well, CBS 2 and News Talk Radio bring you team traffic all morning long. Turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Now, time for our question of the day. The question is, in a new survey, 62% of people claim they know how to do this, even though they've never actually done it themselves. Well, what is it? Here's a look at some guesses. Oscar says painting a room. Okay, I could, I could definitely see that. Douglas says sticking to a budget. That's definitely a very hard thing to do. So I agree with you, Douglas. I'm sure many people would. James says raise their kids slash teenagers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good answers. Uh, of course, you have about 20 minutes until the end of the show to Submit the, uh, if you know the answer, share your guesses on our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Mornings. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News This Morning, the spirit of Boise is finally here. What you can expect during the big event. Watching CBS 2 live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Thank you. Okay. Welcome back to the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We are live here at Ann Morrison Park. The excitement mounting. You may be able to hear the announcer just right over there. Now, of course, the Spirit of Boise would be nothing without our media partners. That's why CBS2, CapEd Credit Union, and Town Square Media, we are all working together to bring you the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. It's been going on for over 31 years, and that's all because of Scott and Lori Spencer. They are the creators, the masterminds behind this entire event event and of course Scott is no longer with us but his wife Lori is keeping the magic of the Spirit of Boise alive. The Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is back and the pilots are preparing to fly at Ann Morrison Park. 
it is a beautiful place to fly. The green grass, the trees, and it kind of sits in this bowl. Greg Lindsay, a commercial hot air balloon pilot in Arizona, has been flying at the Spirit of Boise since 2018. I feel welcomed. My crew feels welcomed. It is an amazing event to be at. Although he flies many balloons, his favorite is Floating Oasis. Floating Oasis is kind of like the most important balloon for us because it tells the story of Susan, my wife, and my life. And she's a commercial pilot as well. Through different images, the balloon illustrates Greg and Susan's travels and even challenges they have faced. And the saguaro represents like it struggles in the desert to survive on very little water. Well, my wife was a breast cancer, ovarian cancer survivor. Her body was struggling. So that represents her journey through cancer. He says the founders, Lori Spencer and her late husband, Scott, are the reason he keeps coming back to Boise each year. We do 20 events a year. If I had to strip down to five events, that would be one that I would always come to. Katie Griggs, a balloon pilot, first went to the Spirit of Boise in 2003. They haven't been back uh, until the last four years, and, and then I've been going every year. Her balloon is called Wind Rose. I designed the balloon myself, and it's probably my favorite so far, and I've, I've had quite a few balloons over the years. She says hot air ballooning is a magical experience. I think it's fun for the people to come out and see and actually watch the balloons fly because it's something that they don't get to see every day. This year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is August 31st to September 4th at Ann Morrison Park. Ariana Piper, CBS 2 News. We can't wait to see you all here today. And just a reminder that the balloons will be on the field at Ann Morrison Park around 645. That's actually right now. That's what we're seeing behind us. Still a little dark, though. The sunrise gorgeous. But Caphead Kids Day kicks off at 725 a.m. down here at Ann Morrison Park. And, of course, it's going to be a great time. I am also joined by the chief pilot of, of course, the Spirit of Boise, our own Roland Stedham. Good I'm morning, a chief Roland. pilot. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you're the chief weather <laughs> forecaster, chief pilot. He's also skydived, actually, out of some hot air balloons. But maybe don't try that at home this time. <laughs> uh, you know, if they invited me to, I would. But yeah. that requires a little, shall we say, a little more wide spaces. We, we may need to work on that maybe for next year. We'll, okay. we'll talk about that. But I know today, you know, we're doing the tethered air, hot air balloon rides out there. The kids are lining up. So can you speak a little bit to, of course, you can't get up in the balloon without, of course, the weather playing games. So what does that look like? What's the criteria for well, launch? The the criteria for launching a balloon itself is six miles per hour. In other words, if the winds hit six miles per hour, they will leave it up to the pilot's discretion, but at six miles per hour, they don't like to take passengers. The reason is uh, anything above six miles per hour, now it's easy going up, but it's not so easy because if you're coming down in a six, seven, eight mile an hour wind, the balloon's touching down and it's being dragged. The ability for the crew to grab a hold of and control the balloon is diminished when the winds are blowing more than six. And there's some areas in the valley where the winds are already blowing, you know, five to six, it's 10 miles an hour out in Caldwell. So that would be a little bit of a concern, but thank goodness today, we're just doing tethered rides. So yeah. they're okay, <laughs> they can launch keep the balloons attached to the ground and give the kids that sensation of going up in the balloon. Oh, Roland, it's going to be so much fun. Thank you so fun. much for you being bet. here with us. Make sure you come down and say hi. Of course, we'll be here throughout the entire week for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And we also, of course, want to send it back to you, Marcos, because if we talk about the weather here. Of course, you are the man with the plan. Let's see what our weather forecast has in store for this week. Here's a look at today's forecast. A high of 104, getting hot, and those triple digits will be sticking around for the next couple of days, folks. Here's a look at those uh, triple digit highs across the valley, 105 in Caldwell, 104 in Nampa, and then there's Boise there at 105 as well. A uh, little cooler out in the mountain region, 95 in McCall, Stanley there at 91, and then Salmon at 95 as well. But it's gonna be a scorcher of a week, folks. Staying fairly dry for the time being, we do have a trough, upper trough system coming through the area by tomorrow, cooling things down a couple degrees into the upper 90s, but we are expected to get back into the triple digits by Thursday, folks, or Friday. Uh, so here's a quick look at what to expect. A scorching week, highs up to 104, super dry conditions, and staying hot 
into the three day weekend. Here's a look at that extended seven day forecast 104 for Wednesday, 98 there on Thursday. Sunny conditions back into those triple digits by Friday into Saturday and Sunday, staying hot before we get back into the upper 90s by Monday of next week. But notice that sunshine and those dry conditions will be staying around. Look at that, looking at that extended mountain forecast, hazy conditions as those fires continue to burn. 89 on Thursday, sunny, 92 by Friday, and it's going to be staying pretty stable there in the lower 90s and lows in the 50s. And of course, CBS2 continuing to keep you updated on all things traffic. How are things looking out there, Ron? Earlier grass fire taken care of at the Vista interchange that uh, it caused the uh, ramp to be shut down from uh, Vista to ID4 West, but that's all open, all taken care of. Stall now in Canyon County, ID4 eastbound about a quarter to a half mile before the Karcher Midland 33 exit coming east out of Caldwell. Slow traffic all the way back to the Franklin 29 interchange pretty much. Uh, stall just blocking part of a lane, but enough to keep things busier than usual for about uh, three and a half miles or so on ID4 eastbound. Minimal slowing merge areas in Meridian. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Appreciate that update, Ron. Well, CBS2 News and Talk, K Talk KBOI Radio bring you team traffic all morning long, so turn on that radio on 670 AM, 93.1 FM for more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS2 News, the Spirit of Boise is finally here which you can expect during the big event. You're watching CBS2 Live from the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Welcome back to Ann Morrison Park. We are kicking off the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. It is an exciting day. It is Cap Ed Kids Day, where kids get to come on down here and go on free tethered balloon rides. It's an exciting time, and CBS 2's Michaela Elledge is live. We're going to send it on over to her. Michaela. event is about to start kick off a little bit and you said there's a lot of questions that parents have um, for this event so let's address some of them what are some things that parents look out for so I know that there's a lot of newbies down here this morning and one of the questions we've kept we keep getting is how much does it cost for my child to go on a tether balloon ride that's the best part of Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic it is free the tether rides this morning are free there's maybe about 20 balloons out here so chances are your kids if they pick the right line might be able to go up in more than one balloon uh, another question we keep getting is where do we line up for them is there just one Line. No, you just gather at the basket of the balloon that your child wants to be in and get your camera ready. Take lots of pictures. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. And again, make sure you come to Ann Morrison for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Back to you guys. And now time for our question of the day. In a new survey, 62% of people claim they know how to do this even though they've never actually done it themselves. That answer, changing a tire. Our next newsca newscast coming up at 11 and your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com and the CBS2 mobile app. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.